Sources of power. Power is a difficult concept to define. People seem to know when they see it, but have a hard time pinning down exactly what it is. In a notable study of power conducted by social psychologist R.P. French and Bertram Raven in 1959, power is divided into five separate and distinct forms. Reward power. This results from one person's ability to compensate another for compliance. Legitimate power. This power comes from the belief that a person has the formal right to make demands and to expect others to be compliant. Coercive power. This comes from the belief that a person can reprimand others for non-compliance. Referent power. This is the result of a person's perceived attractiveness, worthiness and right to be respected. Expert power. This is based on a person's high level of skills and knowledge. A CEO, monarch or prime minister may have the ultimate legitimate power, but it also extends to anyone in a managerial position. This could be a line manager, assessor, project manager or anyone with a formal role that gives them power over someone else. This power can be unpredictable or unstable if you lose the title or position. Legitimate power can disappear since others were influenced by the position and not by you. Relying on legitimate power as your only way to influence others isn't enough. You may need more than this or not need it at all. Reward power. People in power are often able to give out rewards such as raises, promotions, desirable assignments, training opportunities or even just simple compliments. If others think that you will reward them for doing what you want, there is a high probability that they will do it. The problem is you may not have enough control over the rewards as you need. For example, supervisors can't give away salary increases and not all managers can control promotions. So when you use up all your available rewards, or the rewards don't have enough perceived value, your power weakens. Coercive power. This can be problematic and sometimes subject to abuse. It can sometimes cause unhealthy behaviour and dissatisfaction. Examples are threats and punishments, giving undesirable assignments, or even being demoted. As a last resort, you may need to invoke disciplinary procedures. However, extensive use of coercive power is rarely appropriate. Expert power. People will often listen to you if you have knowledge and skills that enable you to understand a situation, suggest solutions, use solid judgment and generally outperform others. You can take your confidence, decisiveness and reputation for rational thinking and expand them to subjects and issues. This is one of the best ways to improve your leadership skills. Referent power. This can sometimes be thought of as charm, charisma, admiration or appeal. The power comes from a person liking and respecting another and strongly identifying with that person in some way. It can be a big responsibility as you don't always have to do anything to earn it. Therefore, it can be abused quite easily. Somebody who is likeable but lacks integrity and honesty may rise to power and may use that power to hurt or alienate people. Ben Fari in 1986 later added to the theory by including three additional sources of power. Information power, affiliation power and group power. Information power. Information power is when a person possesses wanted or needed information. This is a short term power but doesn't necessarily influence or build credibility. For example, a project manager may have all the information for a specific project and that will give them information power. But it is hard for a person to hold this power for long as eventually the project will end or the information will be released. Affiliation power. Affiliation power is when a person attains influence by gaining favour or simply acquaintance with a powerful person. This power is all about networking. People employing this power build important coalitions with others. Group power. Group power is a very influential tool. It is collective problem solving, conflict resolution and lots of minds for creativity. Very few individuals are dominating and it's very much a group think strategy. Anybody is capable of holding power and influencing others. You don't need an important job title or big office. But if you recognise the different forms of power, notice the impact your style has, positive or negative, and you can avoid being influenced by those who use the less effective types of power, you can then focus on using referent and expert power for yourself. This will help you become an influential and positive leader.